Next up, we have Tish giving a talk called MCAD plus ECAD for DIN rail energy monitors. Tish is a non-practicing electronics engineer and almost PhD. He formerly worked in remote sensing as a GIS developer, but has been an embedded system enthusiast for a long time. He is currently building the logistics platform of the future in Africa. Please welcome Tish to the stage. Hi. Yeah, all good? Yeah, is it better? Awesome. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to give this talk about the Dean Rail energy monitors that I designed in KiCad. Um, I use, I've been doing ECAD for not very long. I trained as an electronics engineer. Uh, the opportunities for doing electronics engineering in Adelaide are small. The, the other, other uh, Adelaide person is also here that I know. Uh, so yeah, the outside of defense in Australia, you don't get to do electronics engineering much. Uh, you can do a lot of software. Um, so I ended up start doing software. So the, the coming back to electronics was uh, sort of a, from a hobby perspective. I wanted to do something for myself. So I built a solution around it and it sort of snowballed from there. I started building more and more stuff. Uh, I did a small crowdfunding project, so sort of I'll have some asides on doing electronics as sort of a cottage industry, uh, just doing stuff at home by hand, small scale stuff, which I'm sure a lot of you have done. It's just my perspective. Um, so, let's see. so I wanted to build an uh, open source energy monitor. Uh, so there are various motivations around it. Uh, the uh, one of the big ones is uh, in South Australia, we have very high energy prices, uh, and uh, it famously uh, is the home to the big battery set up by Elon Musk, uh, and then the, it became an election issue and so on. So I wanted to see how, the, uh, how much energy we were using in the house, what, uh, what was the main consumption like, could we remove parasitic loads, did switching off the TV at the wall did really help? How many watts did it save? Uh, so on and so forth. So yeah, so the, there are a lot of energy monitors out there. There is uh, the Open Energy Monitor project using Arduinos has been around for the last 10 or so years. Uh, the, the forum there is pretty active. I picked up a lot of tips there. One of the shortcomings of the sort of microcontroller-based energy monitoring is uh, uh, the classic Arduino has only one ADC, and uh, it may have seven or so ADC pins, but underneath there is just multiplex single ADC, so when you're sampling stuff, it's not synchronously sampled. So it's just like wiping across, uh, and also it can create crosstalk between things. Uh, so the, uh, that, those are sort of the limitations, and uh, uh, that's, it's fine for getting started. Then uh, there are a lot of, uh, electronics, smart meters and stuff, and manufacturers have been making um, ASICs to do energy monitoring. So the, one of the, the particular one that I have been using and I'm looking at building, uh, building the repertoire of using more of them uh, is the microchip Atmel uh, series. There is other stuff in from Cirrus Logic, there is stuff from uh, STM, and so most of electronics manufacturers have been building this energy monitoring ASICs. Uh, developing for them is designed for uh, like a big co company, you have to buy the dev kits and uh, so if I wanted to get the dev kit from the ATM90 E2636 series, they cost $800 Australian, so it's not really for a hobby, just buying a dev kit and getting started is not, a, not an easy step. Uh, and then uh, I did some other stuff using the ESP uh, to forward this data. A lot of the smart meters will do, say, XB, and then you have to offload the data from XB somehow. Um, in Australia, the, in, in Victoria, the smart meters have XB enabled, and then you can get the data off XB every 15 minutes uh, and then see your cons accumulated energy readings like that. The, if you are directly talk to the smart metering chip, the SPI bus on them runs at 200 kilohertz, and you can do measurements every few seconds if you wanted to, just, to have high granularity on that. 
there was a new startup in Australia uh, which was doing uh, Australian designed energy monitors. They're called Watt Watchers. And they had this form factor, the Dean Rail form factor. And uh, in, uh, some people were saying, you know, uh, only industrial places in the U.S. have Dean Rails. In Australia, most houses have Dean Rails. Uh, and uh, a lot of houses even have three-phase. So, yeah, so that's like uh, there's a big market for custom energy monitoring stuff over there. Uh, so, yeah, so it's sort of inspiration, uh, pictures, uh, what, what they look like on the inside. So on, on one side, you have the uh, what watches one, the white PCB. So, uh, so the, uh, the, that one uh, uses... Um, uh, analog devices, uh, energy monitoring ICs, and uh, has a custom, the baseboard there is all power, so it's a, a custom power build, and it has a three, 3G mo module with a little Telstra SIM card stuck on there, and uh, it, uh, the data is read and exfiltrated over 3G, uh, and it does, it has two three-phase energy monitoring chips on it. Uh, on the other side, there is a sort of a Chinese single phase one made by a company called Istron, and uh, its powering is just a transformer. The yellow, yellow blob there is a, is a transformer, and it has like a standard rectifier, full wave bridge rectifier, then LDO sort of power system. Uh, it uses an energy monitoring IC from a Chinese company called Vangotech, uh, and then it has a sort of an L, L, um, LED, uh, LCD display on front to show it it doesn't have network to push the data out. Uh, so yeah, so that's sort of the inspiration of what I am aiming for as, a, as, a, as an output. And this is sort of my constraint. This is the, it has to fix, fit in this box. So I'm just uh, passing this box around. So this, this box is a really good starting point. It's an off-the-shelf Dean Rail enclosure made by Bud Industries in the UK. Uh, they sent me all their CAD files for what it should look like so as I didn't have to reverse engineer it or anything. And the link there uh, yeah, goes to the DigiKey part, so it's pretty easy to source. And you can just, uh, yeah, you can just get out a lot of them and make sure as long as your hardware fits in it, uh, you should be good to go to play stuff in the Dean Rail. Uh, so I'm an electronics engineer, not a mechanical engineer, so I didn't just go into CAD and make everything up. So I just got, uh, Bud Industries does this base PCB you can get as a sample, which is the green board down there. Uh, so you can get that to start building and wiring stuff up. So I got that, and I got a bunch of parts and plugged it in and tried to m work out some proto-board-based -ba structure that will fit inside. The orange blob there is, the, is, a, is a switch mode power supply. I didn't want to design my own power supply, so like that, what watches got, people had done. So I picked an off-the-shelf uh, uh, switch mode power supply and started working around that. Uh, on the top are, <clears throat> is there some uh, Waymos uh, boards with LoRa uh, that uh, sort of I was using as a placeholder for something that will let me put stuff out on network and so on. Uh, and then I was aiming to make this uh, vert vertical PCBs carry metering and other things. So that's what I, where I started, just taking some boards, some proto boards, cutting them up and shoving it in uh, to see how it looked like. So I, I got some help. So I got some help from uh, Andrew Karras, who is, uh, helps uh, doing prototypes and mechanical design, MCAT stuff. So I gave him this, and he drew this up for me uh, in his CAD tools. And I sort of got the step file and put it in FreeCAD, looked at the dimension of the boards uh, and how the, how the individual PCBs will fit in the Dean Rail. Uh, if this, this fits, hopefully I can build PCBs with similar parts and a bit of parts on them that will also fit. So just towards uh, how the energy monitoring stuff works, uh, there are lots of choices. So the, how you sample the, uh, the voltages and currents, 
uh, what sort of ADCs you pass it through, where do you do the maths, what sort of network devices do you have uh, to push the data out, uh, so on. Uh, there is lots of stuff around there. So for power, there is a choice between using a switch mode like, uh, like I was going to, going to use or a transformer like Eastron had used uh, with rectifiers. Uh, there for voltage samplers, you can uh, use a resistor divider ladder to come down from 240, 110 down to the millivolts that the ADC will handle, or you can use just uh, some small transformers, potential transformers, or sometimes a mix of both. Uh, potential transformers which go to 12 volt that are easily available off the shelf, then a voltage divider after that. Uh, and then uh, for sampling current, you have the option of a big lamp of copper or with known resistance, a shunt, or a, a CT, a current transformer. Uh, Sorry, I'm just passing some stuff around. So that's the most commonly used uh, current transformer, 100 amp current transformer, or you can do Rogowski coils. Rogowski coils are really good for doing large bundles of cables where you just strap the Rogowski coil around it. Uh, they're pretty flexible. For DC, you can use Hall effect sensors or other magnetic sensors. Uh, different ADC options are there. Uh, you can use the single ADC Arduino style stuff that I was saying. You can do, I've seen energy monitors done by Sense, there, which has like TI ADCs running at two mega samples. And then you can do the maths on your, on your microcontroller, on a CPLD, on FPGA, and then you can push the data out, present the data uh, via some, some sort of uh, controller which runs either uh, a bare metal code or an operating system. So the, this is sort of uh, going to, uh, to KiCad, so just showing my addiction to schematic. It's not a very complex schematic. There are some repetitive bits in it, like the, like the samplers, uh, which maybe could be expressed better in code. Uh, it's very simple. It just does. Uh, the, the switch mode power supply is all modularized. It just has a couple of LDOs to clean up the, the noise that the switch mode might be generating. Uh, and then uh, it, it has a little battery backup. Uh, I was like planning to report power outages uh, when the main power goes out you could report back to the power authority that the power has gone out if you had a battery backup sort of system and LoRa to push that information out. So that's sort of the layout for it. Uh, I, um, uh, yesterday in the, at, the, at the hardware happy hour, I was talking about misusing connectors. So the dense connector there is a PCIe X connector so just to bring a lot of signals and on a, onto a cheap connector that's known to be good mechanic, mechanically. So I'm just using a PCIe connector, misusing it. So I'll pass out the implementation of this board. So the connectors come out on the side of the board and they're, they're not exactly right. So the, we had to cut the enclosure a little bit when we sent it out. Uh, so the next one is uh, my wife helping me out, uh, crimping, crimping stuff. <laughs> because uh, the current clamps, as you see, come with the jack. And on the other end, there is a, this Molex NanoFit connector. So we had to do this adapter cables, lots of them, so that we can ship out the, all, all of the current clamps with an adapter to plug into the energy monitor. So the energy monitor can handle eight current clamp inputs. Uh, so this is the uh, measurement PCB schematic. Uh, the, the layout is a four layer board. And then what it looks like, there is high voltage coming into it as well, even though it's sampled down, uh, i.e. there are voltage dividers, but uh, it still has the AC coming into it for measurement purposes. 
uh, then this is the this is the board that provides isolation. Uh, so that there is a SPI isolator chip on it, which basically uh, isolates the microcontroller from the measurement IC. So you can plug the microcontroller into USB, download code, prototype whatever you want to do, uh, and the 240 volts is on the other side of the isolator. And that's the PCB for, uh, layout for it, and that's what it looks like. It's very bare. There's plenty of room to add stuff on it. Uh, so yeah which I have tried to do, so I'll pass out some of those. Um, uh, what next? So uh, my time is almost finished. So um, all, the, all this stuff is, is great, and uh, you know, what are we going to do? What am I, how, where am I at? What are my plans? So the, the measurement is, uh, I built the system to be modular so that you could experiment. So you can experiment with different sources of power at the base. You can experiment with different ways of measuring it uh, in the measurement module. You can experiment with different ways of uh, displaying it, different processors in the top level uh, in, the, uh, in the presentation module. So you can change displays, you can change the size of the OLED or the LCD, you can change to e-paper if you want, uh, which have all of these experiments I have done. Uh, then change the main processor, which is like one of the biggest things. So uh, I have used mostly the ESP32 and the ESP266 so far. And then there's a, uh, there's a whole sort of software push to do things that support Linux. Uh, and then just bang out the SPI bus on the other side. Uh, so I've been working with uh, MIPS and RISC-V based implementations as well. Uh, and then uh, can you add more features? So once you, something is out in the wild, people are like, can we do this, can we do this, can we do this, can we do this? So, so some we can do, some I, I, I don't have what would I say? I'm, I don't have the sort of uh, certification stuff that I cannot do. So like stuff like, can I do commercial? This is a hobby project, so I'm not trying to sell these things as such. It's an open design, so the aim is for people to experiment, build. If a company would like to certify and build a commercial product, 240 volt certification takes a bit of effort. So the, that can be done. And then uh, the the other the stuff like uh, the, the the 9CT stuff and I have in there because I actually had a contract to do a bespoke project in Brazil where they wanted to have three three-phase energy monitors, hence nine current clamps with LoRa, with this and this and this. So it required more space. So it was at three units of Dean Rail. So the, the enclosure that's going around is two units of Dean Rail. So I did a one for with three units of Dean Rail and that, that, that works fine. Uh, you can on, only pack so much into, into one. There's still room in the Dean Rail, so we can, uh, we can, do, uh, we can do a bit more there as well. Uh, I'll pass out a couple more modules, the measurement modules, and the, my sort of first cut at doing a Linux SOM-based uh, front end. And yeah, going back to the 3D and how, how all this is done. So each time I made the KiCad file, I would also produce a step file and uh, populate all the parts and then uh, do the mechanical assembly in FreeCAD to see if it still fit the enclosure, bring it in, uh, push it around and see if it fits the enclosure. Even if you do that however much, you still don't get it right because you actually have to mechanically push the thing in and it's not just, it fit, just fits, there has to be space for it to move and fit. So there has to be space for you to come, come into it uh, and then clip into the right place and then fit into, the, uh, fit into the enclosure. So you have to sort of slide it into place and sh make sure it fits. So that's sort of the next aspirational design with a, a Linux front-end board. 
So it have Ethernet, USB, and a few other things on it uh, in the front. Similar back, and then I have aspirations to do uh, sort of high, the, the, what I was describing, the high-speed ADC FPGA-based uh, samplers at a uh, couple of mega samples so that you can do like uh, device fingerprinting, uh, you can see early failure in motors and so on and so forth. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's my talk. I can take questions. I do have some giveaways. These are ATM9026 boards. They are fresh from the factory. I'll just break up and give to anyone who is interested. Uh, we're going to do uh, questions in here. We have some time. We're going to change it up. Uh, so I'll bring the mic to you. <laughs> How soon until your slides are available, and where do we look? S sorry? Yeah. How soon is the slides available? The slides? Yeah, they're, they're on Google Slides. I can tweet it after this. Uh, and we're, uh, we should have the talks up fairly soon. Uh, I forgot to ask what YouTube channel it's going to go on, uh, but uh, if you follow uh, KaiCon, Hashtag or Chris Gamble should be able to tell you when, when all that goes up. Any other questions? Uh, so you mentioned you have a mechanical background and you did the CAD work in FreeCAD, right? Sorry? You, you did the work in FreeCAD, right? Yeah, but, so the assembly, so KiCAD, Ki sorry, I'll speak to the microphone. Okay. Uh, KiCAD indi uh, exports individual step files per PCB. Uh, so I exported the three that I had, and then I had the placeholder for the front end and the enclosure, and I did the assembly of those step files in FreeCAD. So I assume you came from, what was your CAD background before FreeCAD? Um, how does that compare to, you know, like say SolidWorks or NX and stuff like that? Yeah, so I'm an electronics engineer. I haven't used any other commercial oh, never mind. Okay. MCAD package. So FreeCAD is where I did. I did do a lot of Blender for work and uh, mesh mixer for uh, stuff. Uh, but yeah, so FreeCAD is where I sort of did for MCAD. I didn't use anything else before. Gotcha, thought you had a mechanical background. So. Uh, I think he was first here. He still got a question? Yeah. Is there uh, other, uh, you had mentioned LoRa. Is, uh, is, uh, is this kind of monitoring in Australia going on LoRa networks over there? Uh, the, the energy uh, measurement stuff, uh, the one that's already deployed is XB. Uh, LoRa is like a proposal. It's not, not in practice yet. So yeah. uh, you mentioned you're not seeking um, certification. Yes. Um, I had a question. How did you, I, even if you're not seeking to certify, do you consider the certification rules for uh, clearance and creepage? so that you're not exposing your users to Yes, so the, the, like, it's the same rules as the company which sells the dev kits. The dev kits are not certified. So this is essentially a dev kit. So uh, it's basically for building a product. It's not a product. So the dev kits are written as this is not for use as a product. This is to work out how the IC functions. So similar rules. Any other questions? All right, uh, let's thank Tish, and uh, as we get, we'll get set up for the next speaker. Thank you.